subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man. Danny Houston. everybody to the 20th anniversary hypnotic brunch i go by the name of donnie houston and today's guest is none other than nick storm he's responsible for this brand that you see all around here man these blue bottles man nick storm how you doing man i'm good i'm good i'm feeling good i'm, on a, I'm blessed on a sunday for sure for sure so man um you in town how, how often you come to the h man well i got a call from my guy uh one of my guys, David Anderson, told me to come on down. I was putting something together. Yeah. And, I, and I wasn't going to uh, not give that moment up. So, yeah, I came on down. And, and Houston is like, I think it's like my second favorite city. Hmm. And yeah, don't tell my cousins from Chicago that. But, yeah, it's like my second favorite city. Yeah. yeah so I had to come on down. Yeah. So where, where are you originally from? I'm originally from New York. Yeah. Yeah, I'm originally from New York. I was born in Harlem, raised in Yonkers. Um, yeah, so I'm from New York. Yeah. I mean... I'm a Yankee fan, so I know you Astro fans are still in this building. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a mute your mic in a minute, man. Yeah, you get yeah, too don't, much Yankee don't, talk, no, man. no, don't mute me. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not going to talk about uh, what happened, but, you know, me and Mikos go back and forth with it, but it's okay. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So, man, talk about even before Hypnotic, you were doing the music industry, right? That's what kind of, like, bridged the gap into yeah. alcohol for you, Yeah, right? I was at Sony Music. I was at Sony Music for six years. Yeah. And I was doing a lot of work from, like, uh, college promotions to A&R assistant. And then from there, I started, to, I started to become a promoter. And I was doing promoting nights in New York. And I was doing Industry Tuesdays. So I would take all the CDs from Sony, and I would play them on a Tuesday night before you ever heard the music. So this, this, is, this is like mid, late 90s. So what's out right now, like around this time that you're playing? Oh, man. All right. So when I'm, when I'm, pro when I'm promoting, I'm going to tell you right now, it was Nas, Cypress Hill, the Fugees. The score? Yeah, I was like, that's yeah. I know I'm dating myself way back, but yeah, <laughs> it was there back Ooh. then. So yeah, I was taking a lot of the albums and we were playing them for all the whole everything from Epic, anything in the Sony system, Columbia, So So Def had just signed. So anything from there, we were actually promoting on those Tuesday nights. And so how does that how does that turn into you know getting involved with the with the? It's liquor? crazy. Um, I took a meeting, and um, I took a meeting with a guy. It was like I got I got, I got something I want to show you. And uh, it was a lawyer, and the lawyer said, Nick, see if you can help this guy out. So I took the meeting with him, and it was this blue bottle. And I knew nothing about alcohol. That's the best thing about this conversation. I knew nothing about alcohol, nothing. And, um, but I knew about promoting, and I, you know, I knew about marketing, I knew about how to promote. So I took it up to Mariah Carey's party at the time, and, and this is, is it, is it called Hypnot? Because it was Hypnotique. No, right, it was Hypnotique yeah, at yeah. the time. It was Hypnotique. And um, I took it to Mariah's party and seen like everybody like kind of going crazy for this brand. But at the time, everybody thought it was Alizé. That's a, that's a key thing. Because Alizé was the leader in the market. You know, so they had the red and they had the orange. So everybody thought this was like some new blue Alizé, but it wasn't. It was called Hypnotique. That's what it was. Yeah. So you go to the morale party. I mean, talk, talk, yeah, yeah. talk so, about the morale. First of all, the morale party. You know what I mean? You go, is this your I, first Mariah Carey best party? Thing, the best thing about the Mariah party was, y'all remember the brat? Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just making sure. So the, the brat and uh, Wang Ye from Boys to Men, they were playing pool in the corner. And I remember walking over to them and I was like, the brat was like joking around. She was like, this is my new favorite drink. This is my new. But I. I mean, I didn't know her. I'm just watching her action. And then Wanye was joking, and then a couple of other people, and then Jermaine Dupri came over, and he brought a bottle. He had a bottle in his hand, and he started pouring it for, like, the section. And I was like, oh, shit, this might be something. Ooh, can I curse? You good, you good. Yeah, My yeah, fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, this might be something. So I went back to the owner. I said, listen, I'm about to quit my job at Sony. All off, all off the Mariah Carey True story. I said... Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. I want to be clear. This is all off the Mariah Carey party. You ready to quit the job? I quit my job for, uh, um, I would say for not only an idea, but just I felt something. Sometimes in life, you got to take that leap. You just don't know when you're going to take it. But sometimes you just got to take that chance in life. And I, that was my, like, my opportunity. Like, yes, I'm at Sony. I'm having a great time. And, but I, I felt something in my gut. You got to always believe your gut. 
And I took that chance and I, I left. Well, you, because this is the thing, like, I'm a music guy, so I'm trying to figure, like, were you passionate about music or was music just a job? So the transition wasn't easy to go from one sector to another. Like, I, oh, well, I'm I was just do liquor. So passionate about music. Yeah. And I even loved my job. Um, and at the time, I felt like there was more in life for me. Because I still, I, I, I was growing, but I don't think I was, like, really growing at the pace that I really wanted to grow. And at that time, the Sony system, it was very political. And like only friends hired friends, and I, I watched a lot of like things happen that I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a humble person, so I'm gonna sit back. But when I found my opportunity, I, I just jumped. So what year was this Mariah Carey party? <laughs> 2000, no, it was 90, it was 99 going into 2000. I'm asking dates for a reason, I'm gonna bring it up in a minute, but okay, nine, nine, Oh, hold on, hold on, yeah, it was that, um, but I was, on, I was 15, just making sure. <laughs> So it's 99, 2000, 15 year old Nick Storm. Yeah. He's ready to quit his, his Sony job. Yeah. <laughs> 15 years old, jumping out of hypnotic. So you jump in a hypnotic, well, hypnotique. Yeah. Um, what's some of the first, like, you know, it's easy to get the vision when you have, you know, like something like that, like, hey, I can see it. But then, yeah. of course, things happen and you're like, well, I don't know. Like, talk about some of the mountains you had to climb. No, no, no. To, to I came here to tell a story, just real quick. And I came here to tell a true story. And the thing is, I went broke for eight months. After you accepted the job? No, no, no. You see, you quit in a corporate job where you had health insurance and you know you have your, you know, your check and you're, you're comfortable. But I took a chance, like I honestly, I depleted all my savings. I was living in a one bedroom apartment and I was going out every day in the back of my trunk. And y'all being from the South, I'm pretty sure that you understand about how records are sold in the back of a trunk. You know, you can listen to the cash money days and understand. I was selling liquor out the back of my car. And I was struggling because I was going to liquor stores, clubs, bars, and everything. The only thing I ever heard was the word no. Wow. No. And, and it was every day. You know what the will that you have to take as a man with the one-year-old daughter and running around and, and trying to sell every day? to these stores and I have a book, a black book that David knows about it, a black book that had 41 accounts tell me no. Yeah, every night I go home and figure out what I'm gonna do the next day, but I'm gonna have to get it done. Within this time though, are you still working the celebrity aspect of like trying to get the placement in the parties? No and celebrities. Just, you're done with that? No celebrities, the only thing is just trying to get placement. Mm -hmm. And then of course doing, still doing my industry Tuesday night and probably just getting it at, I only had one account, that was it. But every day of the day, you had to get up and go to liquor stores and bars and restaurants. So it was a, it was, it was a struggle. Yeah. So what, what was the turning point? Because I know Fab, like Fab played a point. You the, played, turning, played. the turning point is, and I don't skip the story real fast. What, what, we, don't, we ain't got to skip if, if it's something important. The turning that. point was I got, an, I got an opportunity to do Puffy's White Party in the Hamptons. I got an opportunity to do Puffy's Party in the Hamptons. But this comes because the place you're promoting is Justin's, right? Right. So that's where that relationship. That's the relationship came yeah, from there. Yeah. Shout out to my man, John Vasquez. He was the manager at Justin's, gave me my break. And he was like, I'm going to take some cases out to the Hamptons. We see what happens. That was September 4th that year. And we took it to the Hamptons. And the joint blew up. And he was like, next Tuesday, I got an album release party. I want you to host. I want you to bring the liquor. I want you to do the album release party. Now remember the date I just told y'all. September 4th, Labor Day weekend. He's gonna give me my opportunity on Tuesday, the following week. In 2001. 2001. Yeah. I show up at eight o'clock that morning at Hot 97, the radio station. I was giving out my flyers and Ed Lover at the time was gonna announce me on the radio, which he did. And at 8.35 that day, I was in a store getting a, a Snapple, and I was just so proud of myself that I'm gonna get this one opportunity. This is like my first record release party, and that was 9-11. How close were you at the time? Like, were I'm you... six blocks away. Wow, so you're seeing all this in real time. Six blocks away. So the night that I'm supposed to do a rapper from Brooklyn's album release party, which I didn't know him at the time, which was fabulous. Now you remember on September 11th, there was only two albums that dropped. Him and Jay-Z. It was Jay-Z, The Blueprint, and Fabulous. That was the only two albums. So we were, supposed to do, we were supposed to do Fabulous that night. Wow, so clearly this is postponed. 
It's postponed, you know what I'm saying? Oh, of course. But uh, but y'all y'all get back together with it like November or something. Yeah, like that? we got back together. I had to figure out when New York was gonna be hot again. Yeah. So I took um, when Michael you... Jordan was coming back to the league. Jordan was coming back to the league. He had retired to coming back, and we was going to Madison Square Garden. So I did the party at Justin's to watch the game. Mm. But the number one club in, at the time in New York was Club Cheetah. So I ended up doing Club Cheetah that night. And who walked in and bought three bottles? Fair. The, the young rapper from Brooklyn, Fabulous. Man. And that was my first introduction to Fabulous. Okay. So Fab, because, I mean, Fab is a, he's a, he's a star in this hypnotic story, in this early story. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Because um, does anything happen before the trade at all placement? Because I remember seeing that. You know what I mean? Nothing happened. Nothing, Nothing happened. You're still grinding it out. Still grinding. Wait, wait, wait. We missed something, though. Because it was hypnotic already, though. It was your idea, right? Yeah. To go from hypnotique. Yeah. To hypnotic, which gave yeah. it more appeal, it, right? It's because I couldn't sell hypnotique. I couldn't sell it. So I ended up changing the name at a liquor store tasting. One day in Harlem, I changed the name because I couldn't, I couldn't sell hypnotique. So I was like, I told a girl joking around, I said, call it hypnotic and see what happens. And that day we sold four bottles. That was like the most I ever sold in my life. I was like, ooh, we're going to call this hypnotic. Something as simple as a name, just. Simple as a name. Hmm. And he didn't even have to do any trademarking on it, this and that, because it was already spelled back then. So he was like, maybe I'll put a Y, maybe I'll turn it to a C or a K. He's like, no, no, we're going to leave it like that. Yeah. So we changed wow. the name on it. Wow. So he would do promotions in like mainstream markets, and he would do hypnotique, and I would do promotions. On the urban side. In the urban side, and call it hypnotic. Until the word, until the name hypnotic killed off, that was it. Wow. Okay, so what is, nothing happens before this trade at all video, but no. Fab likes to drink that much where he's like, hey man, I need that in the video. I'm, I did a deal with Fab. I got the, um, his two uh, managers gave me a great deal. Um, <laughs> for that placement, I think I might have paid as much as this brunch might be. I think I paid for that for the video. <laughs> No, it was low though, it was low. But um, yeah, so I got out to the video set. We did the video. I'm only in like a couple of accounts. The video drops, Fab, Trade It All, Puff Daddy, drops two weeks after BET weekend, going into J July. All I needed was this. This placement he did in the video, he gave me seven seconds of this. It took seven seconds of that placement to not only get calls from accounts, but to get calls from distributors, and I got calls from states. So that's the crazy thing about video placement at the time. A bottle in a video not only opened up the doors in New York just for accounts, it should open up states. So the state of Georgia called, uh, Maryland, the whole DMV call. But now they, they're only calling the little office that we got in Long Island. So they're calling and they're saying, we need this brand. We didn't even have distribution, but then the distributors were getting so much hit from people in the city that the distributors signed us on real quick. So they just signed us on. And we had distribution in Maryland, Georgia, Delaware, Jersey, New York. That's how we first started. Okay, so between the time you start with the brand and that time, how much time was that? Like a year, year and a half? Something yeah, year, like that? And a half, year and a half. Yeah. yeah. So we probably sold 2,000 cases. When the video hit, we had orders in each state for over 50,000 cases. Damn. Yeah. And we didn't even have that much product. We only had, in the warehouse at the time, we only had like 22,000 cases. And then talk about too, because, you know, up until that point, like Chris Style was... That's pretty much the video drink. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And then you come with this, which is much more affordable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and got just this look and everything. Like, just talk about just the whole phenomenon that becomes hypnotic, man. Like, yeah. It started that. from Trade It All. But the real video that did it, I think, Trade It All came out in that year. Now, going into 2003, All Star Weekend in Atlanta, I think to me, that was the, the biggest video that dropped. It's kind of hard to say it now. With, oh, your boy. Your boy. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Kind of hard to say it with the ladies, you know. But, I mean, I can't. I mean. It, it is, is what, what it is. It is. Like, yeah. R. Kelly, uh, Ignition, 60 bottles 
Behind them. Across that? Yeah. What that video did for the brand, it opened up. This is what I'm trying to say about video placement. What that video did for the brand, the whole Midwest, and I'm talking about from Detroit, Chicago, all the way down to Louisiana, from that video, you can see the sales go all the way down, and then the South. I, I don't tell you, that video, it was, it was crazy with that one. Damn. Okay, so Hypnotic is rolling, and uh, I'm going I'm to grab some here for a minute. Cause okay. I, I want to talk about this. Oh, we taking a break. Oh, okay. Oh. I want to I want to talk about this because see, hypnotic came out when I was in college, right? Right. I'm like, well, it was hot when I was in college. I'm like 19, 20, still too young to drink, right. but this is the thing. You know what I'm saying? Like we used to make it a big deal to get this hypnotic. And hypnotic was cool, but this was my twist right here, man. It's incredible Hulk, and I understand that uh, you know you're responsible for that, man. Yeah, yeah. So hold on. If you're gonna do that, let me just tell tell a story. I need you to do that. So put that down like that. The guy walked in the liquor store in Brooklyn and said to me, he was, do, he was um, with a tasting. Can I get one of the tasting ladies? Let's do this real quick, real quick, real quick. Let me get one, let me get one, let me just get one. Just give anyone, just give me one. I'm going to show you this. This is, this is a true story. So, just put that right there. Yeah, so stand right here. So, she's doing a tasting. And she's holding the drinks. She's like, would you like to try some hypnotic? Would you like to try some hypnotic? And a guy says to her, no, we already do this out here. Let me show you what we do. And he took her bottle, just like you did. And then he had bought Hennessy, which I didn't even know that. So he had asked the owner, he said, yo, I'm gonna open up this bottle. And the guy was like, yeah, girl, you, you're gonna pay for it. So he pours it in it. And then the, the girl, yeah, get, get so he goes and gives it to her. And, she, and he goes, stir it up for me. So she takes a stir up, stir it up, after the stir up, right? And then he gives it back to him. She gives it back to him, and he takes a sip. And he's like, this is what we do out here in Brooklyn. This is what we do out here in New York. We call this the money shot. That's what he said, he called us the money shot. So he about to walk away, and comes back and says to her, yo, you know, uh, can I get your number? And she's like, oh, no, 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 I, I can't do that, I'm working. But anyway, so he's like, oh, you know, I just get confidence, you know, I just, I just get confidence when I, when I, you know, when I drink this. He walked away, but it's funny though, when he's like this, I get confidence, you know, I just, and with his two bottles in his hand, I get confidence, and he walks away. And I say, oh, wow. So I'll go back, and I'm trying to figure something out. I said, Hennessy, and their red alizé is Thug Passion. That's my competitor. If I did Hennessy and Hypnotic, and it's green, maybe I'll do the money green shot. Maybe I'll do it. But then, I was like, oh shoot. Maybe I'll do it like the Hulk, as a joke. Maybe I'll do it like the Hulk. So, I called my guy up and I said, listen, I wanna rent an Incredible Hulk costume. And my boss was looking at me like, no, you're not. I said, yeah, I just want to try this. So I rented an Incredible Hulk costume. My cousin had just came home from jail, can't lie, and he needed a job, and he's big and brolic, and he came to me, and I said, we're going to do a promotion at a place like this. And he came, he showed up to the work, he came in his black suit, and he thought he was doing security, and I was like, no. Nope. <laughs> he was like, well, you want me to do the list at the door? I said, no. Nope. I said, I want you to dress up in this Hulk costume. And he said, Nick, I ain't doing that shit. I said, no, no, no. I said, no, no. I said, no, oh, oh, you want this money, right? Like, just do me this favor. He puts on a whole costume at like a number one account in New York at the time. Walks around the whole club with a hypnotic bottle and a Hennessy bottle. And the, a manager at the time told me I would never outsell Alizé. I would never do it. Trust me. By the two hours within the side of the promotion, I was like 10 drinks behind the Thug Passion. It was the Hulk, and it was the Thug Passion. He came back to me and said, if you can guarantee me six weeks of promotions with this incredible Hulk guy and your hypnotic ladies, I'll buy 10 cases a week. So to me, 10 cases a week, I'm only selling a case a week. He's gonna buy 10 cases a week for the next six, for six weeks. 
done. So we blitzed out the Incredible Hulk in New York, but we did it from Brooklyn, the Bronx, Harlem, and all inside the city with this Hulk character as a joke. But we did it, I did it almost as a joke, but ended up turning out to be one of the biggest drinks, you know, ever. Yeah. Thank you. Can we give it up for the model, please? Can we give it up for her? Thank you so much. All right, yeah. Man, you know, Hypnotic was so, like I was saying, it was so um, impactful and so important to, to the culture at that time period. Are there any stories or anything you really just remember, like, you like, this is my hypnotic time. This, this represents hypnotic for me, like, when I think about the hypnotic era. I think the biggest time was when, um, I think, the MTV Music, music Awards, uh, 2006, 2005, 2006, when uh, Puff Daddy was hosting it. And uh, Puffy was on stage at the time, dancing with the bottle. And everybody in there, everybody who was somebody at that time, even Hulk Hogan. So you know it was something when Hulk Hogan was holding a bottle of Hypnotic, right? That's like, huh? But you talking about everybody from Jada, Buster, Swiss, um, Paris Hilton. I'm talking about the people that was, this is back then. And he had this party and I just, I knew that that was like the transition of like, like this brand is like, went way over. And mind you, we had at that time 200, song mentions and 38 videos in three years and Miko's and Dave knows we were paying video placement but we weren't paying the artists what we were doing is I was doing deals with the directors and those were the key things I'm giving up the they're gonna make sure that I'm giving you the jewels right now right? I'm giving you the jewels right now the, I mean the director is gonna make sure it gets in there it's gonna make sure it gets the right shot exactly. it's gonna make sure yeah, yeah. Exactly. now now it's hard though now it's hard because you gotta record labels got smart managers got smart everybody so you got to pay almost like five people before you even thinking about it and you ain't even gonna get the seconds that you need anymore so it's it's, it's it, you know it's, 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 it's changed it yeah yeah but um as you're getting into hypnotic like you're seeing the success. Are you, because I mean, you're going to do some rock later on, but like, are you looking forward to that? Or are you more so like, this is cool, you know, like, how are you feeling as far as career-wise? You know what I'm saying? Like what you're seeing for yourself. Because you've been able to take literally something from nothing. You know what I mean? Something from yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's um, I think it's a blessing, I, 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 you know, um, to be a part of a brand that was, you know, a part of culture. Um, did I know it at the time when it was going to like, really like blow up like that? Not really. I just knew that I'm, I got a brand and I'm gonna work that joint as hard as I can, cause I'm a I'm a hustler, and hustler doesn't mean like I, I want to get up every day and I want to you know I do it for I do it for my, my kids, right? So you got to get up there every day and be like you know what, I got to make it better for them, right? So I, I I mean to this right here of me being here and being able to see David Anderson, uh, you know what I'm saying who was with me on that whole ride, you know Elise Vardy, Candy. You know, just to see that, like this, the, the, the recognition of just coming down to the market and getting recognized is, 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 is more like humbling for me than anything. Yeah, yeah. So eventually, you know, um, they ended up selling, right? Hypnotic yeah, we ended up, yeah, we, we sold the brand. I stayed with the brand for uh, five years. And then I got the call from uh, a guy named. You stayed for five after, or you mean like before y'all sold? I started in 2000. Right. I left in 2007. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, we sold all, but we sold the brand in 2003. And then I had to go to Heaven Hill with, and kind of like be their eyes and ears of what was going to happen with the brand. Because see, what Heaven Hill wanted to do was, and this was very key, you're going to like this one. Heaven Hill wanted to give the money, that whole marketing budget, to a, a company called US Concepts at the time, which now is called Team or MKTG in certain markets. They just wanted to give them the $2 million budget. Like, yo, y'all can take it. But I was like, I didn't want that. I wanted to create guys that, what I was doing in New York, I wanted to create that around the country. So I wanted you to live and breathe the brand. I wanted you to know that Chapman's is popping on Sunday. I wanted you to know that, you know, um, the, 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 the Rockets, is, um, their birthday party is on Tuesday at this spot. I wanted that person, that the, the person in the market that's gonna know everything about the brand, to live and breathe the brand. And that was like very key. So I came up with the ambassador program at Hypnotic to start that side of it. So that was a big key thing for me, I think, in, in, when you talk about being recognized. I started an ambassador program, not only to empower my people, 
but just to, you know, just so I know that the brand is going to be popping every day. You know, and that was one of the things that I, not only when I took from Hypnotic, I ended up taking it from there and bringing it on over to Ciroc. Yeah. But, but before you go to Ciroc, though, can you tell me what's something that you can say, man, like, I'm only here having this experience because I, I got involved with Hypnotic. Like, what's something like that? Is there anything like that that sticks out where you're like, man, I can't believe I'm here doing this or with this person or whatever. Like, Hypnotic brought me here. You know what I mean? Um, I think that... I'm, well, I met so many people when I was with Hypnotic. I used to do everybody's birthdays, everybody... I think knowing Dwayne Wade and early in his career when I used to do his parties back in the day, Gary L. Union's birthday party. But like, I can name so many celebrities then, but I think the biggest thing was putting in all that hard work, being recognized in Source Magazine, being recognized in XXL Vibe at the time. But then getting a the, getting the call from Puff Daddy, to me, that's my biggest thing. And that's 2007 when Puff Daddy was... Right. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, to get a call from him and to be in his office and him tell you, like, yo, this is what we're doing next. You know, I need you on this. That right there was big for me. But see, they, but see, they told me, you know what I mean, that you actually had intentions of, like, you were just chilling. And you could just get this phone call one day. Yeah. So can you I, just tell that whole thing? You know what I mean? I was chilling. I was yeah. actually, I was a little, like, I was a little depressed. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I was After a having depressed. so much success with Hypnotic? So, so, so much success with Hypnotic, but... Like the corporate world, you'll understand, they're gonna try to take some of your budgeting away. And they started taking my budget away and putting it into other markets, which was the general market. And that's like, it started hurting me because you're not gonna not let me keep the culture going and decide to take this marketing into another division. And that was like, so it was like around that week I had some meetings that was very uncomfortable. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna take a break for a second. And I tried to take a break for a day, and I got the call from Puff. One day? I took a break for a day. But, I, but Puff called. I took a break on, a, I think, on a Wednesday. He called Thursday. I had to be in his office on Friday. Okay, how does the Puff Daddy phone call go? Can you, can you reenact no, that? No, 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 no. The Puff Daddy phone call is cool, but ain't nothing like going to his office. Let me tell you, if you ever had a meeting with Puff at this time, He's already got you. I'm going to tell you why. If the meeting is at 3 o'clock, Puff is not going to come into the office till 3.15. The reason why is he wants you to sit in his office. Get the intro. <laughs> and look at his wall. <laughs> and by the time you finish looking at Nelson Mandela, Muhammad Ali, Biggie Smalls, Oscar, Grammy, Emmy, like he's, he's already mine got you. So by the time he walked in, yeah, I, I would have walked and got a cheesecake too. Like, <laughs> what you need? What you need, Mr. Combs? I'm right here. But yeah, he, he, yo, he had me. Like, seriously. So he was like, yo, this is how you talk. Yo, playboy. Yo, how'd you do it? And I was like, how'd I do what? He was like, yo, come on. How'd you get hypnotic everywhere? So I was like. And he's trying to intimidate you, but you got to be like, well, you know, I know your assistant, so I had it at every one of your birthday parties. And he's like, come on, cut the bullshit. Like, not that. I mean, every video. Every, and it's so funny because he had a list on his, on his desk. So he was like, you just did Lloyd Banks' video. You just did this one. You oh, just he got all your one. information. Like, he had all the information, like, already lined up. And then he had Grey Goose information next to him because he already knew his competitor, what he wanted to do. So he was already ahead of me. Looking at what he, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's, he's a guru. Like, he, yeah, he, he's serious. So after that, he was like, yo, all right, we're going to do this. We signing a what? So a week later, I put my two weeks in. I had to, you know, make a decision. I was like, I'm a, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm switching over. So I signed on with Puff 2007, December 1st. Wow. Okay, so what are the first things you start doing to Ciroc? Because Ciroc, like Hypnotic, seemingly came out of nowhere. It was everywhere. Like one of the first big Ciroc things I remember was, I remember he had the commercial where they had the suits on and like all like that was early Ciroc, you know that's what I mean? Early like, Ciroc. Yeah, that's real early. That's yeah. that's like New Year's Eve. That's like 2008. But the first thing was, my job was to take everything I did from here and kind of implement it into Ciroc. So there was only two things that was the biggest thing that I think that to me moved the needle for Ciroc was one was creating the ambassadors. 
So as you're saying, with, you know, with Mikos and David, they're like living proof and living truth of, of, of how to move the needle. So create the ambassador program was the number one key. So we and created this, it. And this is what you brought from Hypnotic. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then the DJ program. Oh, we killed the DJ program. See, the thing was, because Puff had already had radio. He already had, you know, every, not every DJ across America. So what he did is that he took the top 15 DJs and kind of like made them Ciroc boys. So now you got not only the ambassador in the market rocking, you got the voice at night also telling you what to do and what to drink and what we're doing. Was, was, this, was this him or was this you or both of y'all kind of brainstorming and coming up with this whole thing? It was me and Sean Prez. Um, at the time, he was doing all his radio. I had the time with the Hypnotic, I only had three DJs. I had a Latin DJ, which was DJ Camillo. I had SNS and I had DJ Clue. And DJ Clue was like my, my main guy. Like, and then after that, like Puff took everybody. So it was like, and he gave him a program and this is what we were gonna do and it was good. So that was like, that's like the biggest thing between the DJ program and the ambassador program. Damn. Okay, so talk about some of these Ciroc times, man, because Ciroc is a whole nother, yeah, that's a whole, a whole nother era, man. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother conversation. I'm hungry and I want to dance, so that's a whole nother <laughs> conversation. No, I'm just kidding. No, um, no, it's, a, it's um, so from, from 2008 all the way up, um, it was nothing about just, just being a part of the brand, but we didn't, we wasn't really selling the brand, like, I don't understand, we selling a lifestyle. Lifestyle, right, right. That right. was the key. You know, how you walked, how you moved, how you did events, how you did promotions. You know, everything was just like, and we were always the first, and that was the key. Like, we were the first brand, and I don't care what anybody says, we were the first brand to actually have flavored vodkas cool. It was, see, a, it was a big deal every time a new flavor Yeah, because yeah, yeah, the yeah. coconut, I mean, when we came out with the Cocoloso, and that was only developed because it's a funny conversation between Fab and Puff at his house for Winter Music Conference. And Fab was dropping Loso's way a week later. And we was already signing Fab on as a Ciroc boy. So he comes on, he's got Loso's way, he changed it up and make it Coco Loso's way for his whole run. But by the time he's, we dropped away and just kept it Coco Loso for the menus across the country. That's wow. our Coco Loso was. And the Coco Loso, that was what was that? Was that the Coke and the Ciroc or something? That's like the that? Coke and the Ciroc and pineapple. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, man, talk about uh, just some more Ciroc stuff, man. I mean, that's that's a huge deal, bro, to go over there and, and uh, do it again. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, Most people don't. I didn't do it once. I did it yeah, twice. Yeah, you made another hove. You know what I'm saying? They say. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna use that line, but I didn't know if anybody knew that was a Jay Z line. <laughs> For sure, for sure, man. So, what's some of the things that really stick out? You know, from that. How long are you still doing the rock thing? Or that was just a. No, no, that was yeah. a. I, that was it. Was a great run. Yeah. Because you went 2007 to where? 13 years. 2020 was. I was. Yeah. 2020. 2020. Yeah, because it was. Um, oh, you, okay. Yeah. It was time for me. Um, I think you know you get at the, a point in your life where, you know, I'm a. First of all, I was supposed to go to L.A., and I didn't want to really go back and forth from New York to L.A. at the time because. I'm a dad, dad, and shouts out to all the dads out there. Any dads in the building? Oh, okay. Any want to be dads in the building? Um, okay. But um, no, so I'm a dad, dad, so it was very important for me to stay close to home, watch my son, um, he's just starting high school, so watch my son grow. So I just said, you know, I'm gonna I'm do it on my own. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take that another jump, that leap that I did back then, and I'm gonna do it on my own at this time. Hmm. So I came, um, I've made some connections throughout the, the, the years, of course. Uh, made a connection out in uh, Saint-Tropez, out in uh, France, with a, a rosé company. So actually, I signed on, and um, you know, I signed on, but not only signed on, I signed in. And the biggest thing is now is I, I don't just sign in, I sign on, because you want the equity within the brand. That's the biggest thing, is like get the equity within the brand. So um, I made an equity play with it. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a wine owner. It's called Marcel. It's called Maison Marcel. It's out of France. I uh, just signed D Nice, which was good. He came nice. in as an equity partner, which is good. But um, yeah, so then I just started my own like consultant marketing company. So I have, you know, a few brands that's up in New York that um, that's doing really well. So hmm. I'm happy. Yeah, yeah, I'm at a good point. I'm I'm just happy, and and I'm I'm writing a book about this whole thing, so that'll be ready in two uh, yeah next year. 
y- y'all all be in it. How about, you know, my guys, you know, <laughs> how the Houston Astros cheated the Yankees. Oh, oh my fault. It was a wrong conversation. All right, we go. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. It's been great. <laughs> I can take it. I can take it. I can take it. It's been great. This is Nick Storm. No, I'm just <laughs> Man, so, okay, can you give me... Um, can you give me a really good Puff story? Your favorite Puff story? Because I'm sure you've been able to spend time with Puff, man. Like, what y'all doing a Ciroc run? And just over the years, what's a, what's a really good Puff story? Or something that you've learned from him? Something I learned from Puff. Uh, oh, yeah, I learned this. Don't talk to me about the problem. Talk to me about the solution. Period. That's period, right? Like, like at any cost, and make it happen. You know, um, that's like that's like one of the biggest things I could always say. But a good puff story is, oh yeah, <laughs> I, I got so many, but I got a funny one though. I was his 40th birthday party. I had to, um, I was in charge of the the Ciroc girls to keep everybody entertained, and he wanted so badly because you know puff he's always like out the out the blue like he wants i want a a little person here with a flamethrower i want a white tiger i want like this but he wanted this girl dressed as an angel an angel and a bubble and she's gonna float on the pool when he's telling you this are you sitting there like man what's up with puff man And sometimes when he talks and you like you go like this. <laughs> like good luck. But but you gotta get it done, right? So I find a girl, I find an agency that has they they put girls in a pool and they put a bubble. So there's a girl in a bubble and she's on the and she's walking on water. It's dope, it's dope. So I gotta let her breathe every 15 minutes. She has to stop, come out. Breathe and go back in the bubble. There's no air in that bubble. All of a sudden, I got a mic on and I'm letting her breathe. Go. She needs one more minute until she comes off the water. I'm like, I'm telling her to come on, like, so she can come and breathe. Puff comes right behind me and goes, No, 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 no. She has to stay out there. <laughs> so I said, Wait, what? No, no. He said, No, no. Everybody's walking in. Everybody's walking in. No, no. Keep it there. Keep it there. <laughs> so I think it was um, Ashton Kutcher. It was Demi Moore, and a few of the big celebrities that was walking because he wanted them to see it. And they're walking this way, mind you, this girl about to die. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, yo, and she's like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh. I'm, and I'm waiting, I'm so waiting for him to turn his back because I got to get her like, like towards me. So I slip away, I slip away with the tank and I run on to the other side and I say, like, <laughs> and then I give her the air. <laughs> and I push her ass back out. <laughs> and it's so crazy, because when I push her ass back out, Puff was talking to somebody like this. And she's coming right back at him. <laughs> Perfect time. I made it. But no, that, that's the favorite Puff story. That was good, man. That was good. Yeah. That was good. So, man, for anybody, because, I mean, you've been able to come in and, like, revolutionize the game. You know what I mean? Coming up with ambassador programs, all the different things you're doing. For somebody who has an interest in following your career path, what would you say, like, this is how you should go about approaching getting into this? I think you attack everything, in, like, in life. Like, I just think you just go, you know, you set your goals. Goals is very important. You set your goals, and you get up. Mine's is different, because I get up, I'll meditate, but I, the biggest thing I think that's helped me with the last two years is I keep a pad by my bed, and if I think of an idea, well, I think about something. It could be 1 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. If you think about an idea, I think about something I need to do, get it done, I write it down and I get it done. You know, um, I stay humble in the game. I never let anything get to me anymore. I'm, it's, I stay happy. You know, life is too short to be angry. You know how long it takes to, you know, to be angry at somebody or just be angry at something? I don't do that no more. I take life how life, you know, takes me. Other than, I mean, I know you mentioned equity, you know what I mean, being like a newer goal in business. Like, what's the goal now for you? Do you have anything or have you, are you kind of like, hey, I'm just riding it out now? You know, I'm, I'm just riding it out. Yeah. I'm just riding it out. I'm just, I'm just, but you know what it is with my life is that now I want to give back. So I'm giving back the knowledge because I'm, med- I'm, I'm mentoring a lot of kids. 
that's in the business that I want to, you know, to grow. Hold on. Woke up today, looked at your picture just to get me started. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We at Chapman and Kirby, y'all. Yeah, we at Chapman and Kirby, so I'm sorry if I just felt like doing a little Luther for a second. Yeah. yeah. No, go but ahead. I'm, no, I'm mentoring kids that I want a lot of uh, African-American and Latino, you know, men and women to understand that there's so much money in the wine and spirits business. And and it's uh, so many jobs. It's like I got three of my own family members working. One is in sales, one's in event planning, and one is... um. She's doing PR up in that area because, and they, they didn't even know about these jobs. That's the thing. They don't know about these jobs, right? So my thing is just not only educate them, it's one, but my biggest thing is if I can, and I might be going off the road with this one, but I want to be able to see a lot more of us in the sales side of it. Because if you go back, a lot of the sales guys, I would do these talks and 5% of us will be over there. And if I go to somebody and say, yo, I heard Chapman and Kirby's is hot, yo, is that your account? And he'd be like a brother, he'd be like, nah, I got, I got liquor stores over there on the south side. Yo, but whose account is this? And it usually is not one of us, you know, it's really not, and he don't really care about the market or understand the market or understand our culture, and they give it to them because they get the biggest hits, they get the biggest, you know, um, things at the end of the day you know and that right there sometimes hurts me so I want to be able to get our people a little bit more empowered inside of those things so that they get the big bonuses not just the, you know not just the older guy that had this account you know since 1930 and he's still calling on it like I want to see a, a young brother and sister be able to have this account mm. that's what's up yeah. man well um, you know I, I think we'll be able to see that you know what I'm saying yeah. uh, you know but uh, listen before we close it out because it's the 20th year anniversary of Hypnotic. Yeah. We got to do a toast. So everybody grab your glass. Yes, everybody grab a glass. We got to toast. 20 years. Nick, I mean, you go ahead, Nick. 20 years. 20 years, Hypnotic. Hey. Cheers. There it is. All right. It's the Donnie Houston Podcast. I'm Donnie Houston. It's my guest, Nick Storm. Appreciate everybody coming out to the Hypnotic Brunch 20th anniversary. There it is. Thank you.